Hello and welcome to Release Date Rewind. My name is Mark J. Parker and I am a film lover, filmmaker, film celebrator. And normally this is an audio podcast wherever you get your podcasts on your favorite apps. But thanks to Portland Media Center, you are about to watch the video component of this show where I celebrate movie anniversaries with my friends. Each month, I usually talk about two different movies that I love with different friends, and we talk about the making of the movies, trivia, any fun memories associated with them. So I hope you enjoy, because now it's time to rewind. Me. I'm a penguin. I'd like to offer a great big hi there and hello to Sister Mary Clarence. This stuff is terrible. It tastes like. Last but not least, on the actor front, Harvey Keitel, of course. Right. He was having a huge year because Reservoir Dogs and the film Bad Lieutenant, which I've never seen but I know is a big deal. I think he was full frontal nudity, lots of violence. Those all came out in 1992 with Sister Act. Wow. And he was just nominated the year before, or no, earlier this year in 1992 for the Oscar for his role in Bugsy. So. He was also in Thelma and Louise, Last Temptation of Christ. So he was a big deal. And it's funny, my memory of the movie, I remembered him more. I feel like, because this was my first time oh, rewatching yeah. this in a long time. I just felt like he was such a presence on screen right. that I actually thought we checked in with him more. Well, he's always, Not that we needed he's to. always sort of in the background, right? Like, right. He's always he's like talked about a lot. Scaring. He's always, he's just scary, mm -hmm. you know? And Lieutenant Eddie, Bill Nunn, talks about him. A lot, um, you know, with Whoopi on the phone and stuff. So, yeah, he's he's a presence throughout the whole right. thing, obviously. So now, Greg, let's talk about our favorite moments from this movie. Favorite lines. You When we were we oh. just rewatched this together and Greg was quoting things. He was quoting things before they were even said. So right. we can go through the movie. However, but tell me some of your oh. why do you love this movie? First of all, I love how sort of unique it is in approach. Right. Like at the at the beginning we get to the church really quickly. Mm -hmm. Rarely in movies, even like especially now, you'll get you know forty five minutes of them, you know, yep. doing a bunch of the different things. And before you get to that actual like place where the thing happens, you know, yeah, mm -hmm. it's like, so we get to the church within sixteen minutes. Of oh, the movie you, oh, start. you were counting. I was counting. Okay, so we it, it, it's it, it's fast, right? Yeah. And I I like that part. Um. I, I just think that everybody in the movie, you can kind of see their energy. They all have their own like aura mm. around them, and and especially when Whoopi and Maggie um. are are for the meeting for the first time, and they're sort of walking down this hallway or whatever. Yes, it you can just see them banging into each other like their their two energies colliding. Mm -hmm. Right, you can just see their two energies colliding, and they're two like monsters of. Uh, you know, in terms of acting. Yeah. And they just, it, it just all um, came together. Yes. Uh, really well. Um, Real quick about Maggie Smith. One critic I saw, because, you know, this movie is very split with critics, which I thought was surprising. It had a couple great reviews, a couple middle, and a f definitely a few not good reviews. But mm -hmm. one critic did say Maggie Smith was so good, it really feels like she's not even acting. And it's true. Right. You really feel like, like when I was a kid, I was like, oh, that's a real nun. Right. Like, that's just, they just found a really right. good nun to right. play that exactly. role. You know what I mean? And she's so opposite right. of Dolores, who is loud and very emotional. And, right? And right. Uh, Mother Superior is very just calm, even when she's angry, right? She just, right. she barely moves. Yeah. Right. So good. Um, and another thing is, not only was I able to recite lines, mm -hmm. I was able to recite, like, when the camera cuts. There's a certain point. <laughs> yeah. I watched it so many times. How many times do you think you've seen it? Over a hundred times. Really? Over a hundred times, yeah. And probably wow. like 10 or 15 times as an adult. But it's funny. We've never seen it together. I've watched it on TV here and there when it's been on, when you haven't been around. Wow. I guess so because I it's been a long time right. since I've rewatched this. So, wow. Okay. You've seen it that. You right. are a super a fan. A lot of times. Yes. Okay. I love this movie. Like there's a scene <clears throat> when she's... Uh, when Whoopi is, is, or I should say, Dolores, sis, or Sister Mary Clarence, Sister Mary Clarence, is is um, leading the choir for the fir very first time, mm -hmm. and you know they start off and they do a very um, solemn version of 
the song that they're supposed to be singing. Yeah. And then it switches, right? Yep. And we get kind of funky with it. Mm-hmm. And then it's about, and then we get we get a shot of uh, Alma playing the piano, and that goes on for about two seconds. And then right as she shifts key, we do a cut to the exterior of the church. Yes. And people looking around uh-huh. being like, whoa, what's going on? What's happening inside that church? Right? And then we come we come back. Yep. And, and then... you and Greg knew. He was like, now we go outside. I'm like, what? <laughs> He's like, exterior shot. And I didn't know what he was saying. And then we really go outside. And the cool, like, teens who I remember right. them. It's so funny. I remember them so well. I don't know if maybe they're in the sequel. But I remember that group of teen girls. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. And they're like, what? What? And... I guess because we do spend a lot of time with them. And there's one girl wearing a jean jacket. Yep. And she has on like a black hat with like a little like, it seemed like it had like a little feather in it or something uh-huh. or like a little daisy. And they come in. Weird. Right. They come in. Yeah. Right. And that's yeah. when right. things shift. That's when it's right. like, oh, right. we need well, Sister then Mary we see, Then we see the guy who's in the green robe, the one who's like, oh, uh, yes, whatever, the lead the priest. The lead priest or whatever. Yeah. He like does like the yeah. come in ch- children motion. He does that. And they're like, yeah, they they slowly, you know. Yeah, totally. I think that's, is that the Ave Uh Regina? Regina. Regina. I think it's Ave Regina. Let me see. Yes. Yes. Not to be confused with Ave Maria. I know, not Ave Maria, but I guess it wasn't on the soundtrack, but... A lot of these songs that they did were on the soundtrack, right. which is so fun. But yeah, I yeah, that's a great scene. Um, and of course, Ma- Maggie Smith is right. furious because right. you know rock well, and roll. Well, do you want to hear some of my favorite lines? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, my, my favorite lines, which I quote, just in the middle of mm-hmm. nothing. It's just mm-hmm. like the, these are like this, like the found some of the foundations of my life. Right. Mm-hmm. Is um, at the very beginning her. Um, they're called the Ronettes. So one, Ronettes. Of, so one of the Ronettes in her lounge act in Reno, she says, "It's purple mink, Dolores," <laughs> and she and Whoopi <laughs> says, "Mink from his dead wife's closet." <laughs> and I just used to think that was the funniest thing. Yeah. Thing. So you know, I often say it's mink, Dolores. But you um, know, real quick, how gross, mink. Yeah. Like, ooh, that part did not age well. Yeah, but then did but you that see... was very much at the time, because I remember my mom had, like, a fur coat. But did you see then the coat that Dolores puts on? Is another one. Is, is a fur coat that has, like, um, raccoon tails. Like, hanging, hanging from Hanging off of the yes. shoulder. And another quick thing, real quick, since we're talking about her look in the beginning. It was the first time I had seen a boob tattoo. Oh. And I think that's Whoopi's real boob tattoo, if I'm oh. correct. And as a kid, I was like... Well, that's like I thought. That's got to be a birthmark. You don't get a, you don't get a tattoo on like a, such a soft private spot. <laughs> wow, that was really eye opening for me. Yes. Okay. What else? Well, do you and, like then to quote? They, and then you know they're sitting around and they're um, doing arts and crafts. I mm-hmm. think. And and one of them says to her, uh, Sister Mary Clarence, when did you get the call? Mm-hmm. Meaning the call to uh, become a nun. The call from Jesus, basically. And she says, the call. And then she goes, oh, the call, the call, the call. <laughs> yes. Like, man, that you say I a lot. Say, I, yes. and I used to, when I was little, I used to say it all the time, even though I had no idea what it meant. Mm-hmm. And, when, you know, the phone would ring and I'd go, the call, the call, the call. <laughs> so you, so as a kid, you just really loved her reaction. Right. And later you realize the actual meaning. Right. And how that's even funnier. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yep. There's got to be something around here that I can do that's not going to chip my nails or annoy anybody. You will join the choir. The choir? We're terrible. <laughs> this is going to be hell. Tell me about it. Um, there's a scene where where Whoopi and um, Maggie Smith are are going at it after her first performance. Yes. And she says, she says, yeah, I'm talking about getting some butts in the seat. <laughs> And I always just thought that was funny. And when I was little, I used to envision it as like naked butts. In oh, uh huh. I I would always have that visual of like bare bottoms touching like the church pews. <laughs> You're a pioneer. She ain't no nun. You have corrupted the entire choir. I was thinking more like Vegas. You know, get some butts in the seats. Anyway, but you know, I lit. I you know think about that scene quite a lot because there's a lot that that scene is a microcosm of life 
there's always going to be mm. Mother Superior who's trying to tamp down. Who's your coming right, from a place of no. Right. Who's trying to tamp down your new ideas. Who's trying to, you know. Yeah. Well, like that is that is life encapsulated yes. in that scene. The rejection of like the new. Right. Exactly. Of fresh but But also blood. the, the um, th- people being scared of something that has been proven to be a success. Yeah, it's scared like, of it's success. Like we can't, we you know, we can't do that. People want that too much. You know what I mean? Like right. We're giving in to what people want. You know? Yeah. It's like, um, and she's so upset that she like then is quitting. Right. The convent. Right. Exactly. She's like, I'm not needed here. I'm, I'm obviously like old news. It's like, whoa. You know? Right. She's, she's definitely a little passive aggressive. Right. But yeah, you literally have young people coming into the church. Something this convent, this church hasn't had in a long time. Right. Yeah. And then uh, the last one that I wrote down was was um, when she's leading, she's backstage or whatever in the pr- rehearsal room, and she's leading um, the the choir. She's teaching them for the first time, and she's getting the oh yeah the sopranos and the altos in the right spot yep. and everything. And she she asks Alma to play the key of the what this to play the keys of what this song is in, and she goes Alma, and then it's silent. <laughs> And she goes, Alma. And then she stomp, 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 stomp. She goes, check your batteries. And then and Alma. Then, Alma, like, so, and when I was younger. And gives such a sweet smile. That I, actress, her smile. Right. So, yeah. When I was younger, um, I thought the the batteries meant that she was kind of like, oh, like, oh, jokingly that she had a battery in her that she needed. Right. To Which is also funny. I never realized that she had like a hearing device that dangles that yeah. like dangles. It's like um what we like give out to people who need it at the playhouse, like a right. dangling right. hearing aid. Yeah, right. totally. Right. Yeah. Alma's great, man. And I used to say that all you the love time. check, check, check your, your batteries. batteries. Yeah. And, and when I, you know, when I was younger, like a teenager, and I'd scream from my room. And you know how big my mom's house used to be. Mm-hmm. You'd scream from my room all the way downstairs. And my mom wouldn't respond. I'd go, Alma, check your batteries. <laughs> and anyway, that's how I would get Now, my did your attention. mom love this movie as much as you I did? I don't know. I don't remember. I'd love I to don't... know. Like when you quoted that, was she? did she laugh or was she just like? I think she knew. I don't, I don't know. What do you think you loved so much about this? Like I don't know. I was like in... I... I, I, I was drawn to like weird certain sound bites of movies. Oh yeah. Like Mighty Ducks. Which is I think D two Mighty Ducks. Hmm. There's a part where the announcer just randomly goes, Woo Ken Woo because his the character's name is Ken Woo. Oh. And the announcer goes, Woo Ken Woo because he did he did some he got a goal or whatever. So you would And just... I used to say Woo Ken Woo. All yeah. the time. Oh yeah. There are certain Woo Ken Woo. certain lines that just they either are spoken in a way that it just gets in your brain right. or yeah. Yeah. And the other lines that you loved? No, I, I mean, I, there, I mean, there are there's, a ton, pl- but, there's yeah. tons of lines and I wrote down, you know, last time when we just watched it is that it is almost like a greatest hits of scenes. Mm. And so I wonder if it was supposed to be wow. longer mm. and, and, or I could very easily see that there were other storylines that got cut entirely. Oh, that's like, interesting. I could, I could see Kathy and Jimmy, like we, Learn more about her backstory. Yeah, or you know, something like that. Because she stands out so much, but we really don't know much about her. Right. She's not like the the quieter right. Mary Robert, who we we get to know, and we know that she's right. a young nun, a novice nun. That's why she wears a different habit. <laughs> right? Did, did you know that? I didn't know. That. Oh yeah, because everyone a, has the normal boxy one, but she has just a little. I thought it was a fashion. No. Choice. Um, and then the other thing I wrote down was that Kathy and N- Jimmy mm-hmm. is just so. Oh, good. Yeah. And she still her is, smiles. Yeah. Is that you get her character in one second. Oh, my God. At that it's at that immediate. iconic long table when Maggie right. Smith introduces Sister Mary Clarence and they're all there. The way Kathy and Jimmy smiles at the camera. Right. It's that same smile that, you know, when someone's like, OK, like you're right. a little overwhelming. Exactly. Right. You You know exactly her character in one second. That's how good she is. Yeah. And it's such a simple move that, you know, she put a lot of thought into exactly how that character should meet that should meet Whoopi's character for the first time. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And then, of course, her singing voice. She's overpowering everyone in right. the choir. Right? right. And it's funny because she's too loud. Mary Robert is too quiet. 
So it's funny to see Whoopi be annoyed by Mary Patrick's voice. Like, oh, tone it down. But then I'll, I, I remember so well as a kid, it was like quite a shock to me when she when Whoopi puts her hand on the stomach on yeah. on the smaller nun's stomach right. and her voice does change. Oh, wow. I was like, whoa. You know, like yeah. that's a very you really feel like in that scene when she's in the choir <laughs> and Mary Lazarus was the choir teacher or choir leader, I should say. But you really feel like you're there. Right? I used to do that. What? I used to do that in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> I'd put on the radio and like a song would come on and I would wait for a good part and then I put my hand on my stomach and like push in and I go ah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because also you know what it is. All the other nuns really like physically react, right? And it's like, whoa, oh, they're shocked. Yeah. Can we talk quickly about Lieutenant Eddie Bill Nunn, who <laughs> also passed away? That's very sad. Um, I love him so much in this movie, and I remember when we were just rewatching. You also said, God, like I feel like you said, like he's so great. Right. He has such a great smile, such a warmth. Right. It's also nice that he's. Because, you know, this movie is very white, which is also funny that Bette Midler was going to be in it because I feel like, yes, that would have worked great. But, like, it works so great to have a black, a person of another race mm. to just really drive home the point that she is different from all these women. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's nice that she has an ally in the lieutenant who also is a person of color. But did you get a vibe at all? Like, I kind of wish there was a little bit of a romance. Yeah, I know. There's no romance vibe. And you didn't, I'm, I'm you didn't get that. I'm I kind of got that towards the no, end. I'm, you do, you don't you you're glad that didn't happen. I'm glad that didn't happen. Okay, yeah, no. I guess that would have been cheesy. I just right. I don't know. Part of me on this latest rewatch, I was like, oh yeah, they're kind of like flirting there towards the end. I kind of want them to get together since she's with a bad guy. Like she's been dating a bad guy. Right. So it's like I kind of want her to find a good guy, but yeah, the movies, you know, which which yeah, I guess I do respect. It's not really about her love life. No. It's no. about finding female friends. It's Even about she... sharing your talent and finding your your love of music yep. and like that sort of thing. Yeah. And finding your place. Yep. Mm -hmm. Totally. Um, it's funny. I completely forgot the ending. I completely forgot the ending. I love the ending in the casino with all the nuns. Which oh, we I thought to... you were talking about the Pope. Oh no, well, the Pope I kind of forgot, but I I mean I love I love that. Yeah, he's there and he gives him a standing ovation, and then Whoopi's like. Wow, you know, um, and the and the, the the theater the the church is packed, right? Right. Although it does look like they were only gone for a couple days or maybe a night, right? Because, well, let's backtrack. I completely forgot they go to Reno, in a helicopter. Right. All these nuns. There's, I believe, like fifteen of them in a six-person helicopter. In a, yeah, and you know that's the one thing where I could see where critics are like, "Huh?" It's the one thing in this movie that is very funny. It's perfect. That I love it. I think it's funny, but it's like, oh, okay, now we're getting into fantasy it's like territory. Clown car. That's a little, which again works for me. I love it. I'm into it. But I could see where some people are like, "Wait, this was." For the most part, a pretty realistic comedy, but now we're stuffing all these old nuns in a small helicopter to go to Reno. But I completely forgot they but, but they're the, pressuring the helicopter. And the music pilot. is so good at that. Moment. Oh yeah, ba -da, ba -da, ba -da, ba -da. it's so ba -da, ba -da, jazzy. Ba -da, ba -da. It's yeah. yeah, it's it's like almost like a video game. And then it's, and then it slows down at certain points. It goes. Dun, 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 oh yeah, because it's dun, it's tense. Dun, dun, dun. That's why my only critique at the beginning with the Harvey Keitel stuff. I know you were saying in a movie today we'd have forty five minutes. Yes, <laughs> but sometimes sometimes I feel like some movies don't breathe. It's like all right, give me. I do wish. We had a few more minutes in the beginning where Whoopi's character was truly afraid of her boyfriend. You know what I mean? Like maybe even in the first scene where he's like getting dressed and they're looking at each other in the mirror yeah. and stuff where maybe he like did something that kind of scares right. her just to start planting the seed that like, yeah, she actually doesn't even really love him, but you know, he's got his good days, bad days. You know what I mean? But, but the thing is, is that that's the whole thing though, is that she's not scared of him. Yeah. She's Until the shooting. Right, because when she first gets to the church, she says to when when the when the the cop brings her the lieutenant brings her to the church for the first time, 
she says, forget this. I'm going to go work this out with Eddie. Eddie? Mm, Eddie? Uh, Vince. 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 Yeah. Eddie, yeah. I don't know who Eddie is. Eddie's the cop. The Eddie's lieutenant. the cop. Okay, mm-hmm. so she says, forget this. I'm going to go work this out with Vince. So she's not scared of him. Yeah. Like, that's the whole thing. She doesn't want to be here. Right. She, she doesn't want to be no. there. So if she was scared of him, then yeah, she would want and to be And she's very put off that they don't have sex. Chris, do you want to retract that statement? Oh, okay. You sure. don't wish that she was scared. Well, um, I don't you know. You don't wish she was scared. <laughs> It feels a little a little too fast when she sees this shooting, which right. that's good. And I remember as a kid, I was like, oh, my God, that's terrifying. Right. She just saw a shooting. And I could feel that, like, then his goons are like, you know, they're all looking at her. Right. I just wish it was a little more tense. Right. Because it's a Disney movie, I do think they glossed over the truly tense moment there where it would have been great just to, like, have a little back and forth with the camera of her looking at him and her faking it. And then running. But it's a little fast for me. Was it Disney at the time or wasn't it? Yeah, Touchstone, Touchstone Pictures was under Disney. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, it was their like, right. it was their Hulu. It was right. their adult. Right, but back then I don't think anybody knew that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I didn't That know. was before people But Touchstone, fun things. fact about Touchstone, the year later was Nightmare Before Christmas, which was Touchstone, which many people didn't realize that was Disney because Disney wanted to release it, but was so like, kind of like scared of Nightmare Before Christmas uh-huh. That they're like, well, that's our touchstone label. Right. You know? Interesting. So same with Sister Act. It's like, yeah, this is a f- ultimately a family movie, right. but there's some adult stuff. There's sex talk. Right. Because I do think it's funny. Dolores is very put off. I feel like a few times in the movie, she is most put off by their chastity. Where, where Maggie Smith says they right. take a vow of this, a vow right. of this, a vow of abstinence. I'm out of here. Right. You know? So I guess her and Vince really, you know, got it on a lot, which makes sense. <laughs> well... Even though they were older, you know. I mean, she was wearing like a little nighty. Oh yeah, uh huh. It's almost at, like at where we we meet Vince, kind of like. Well, I, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah. I, I got the impression that was po- post coital. Post coital. It could be, or it could yeah, because he is getting dressed. Mm. So yeah, I think you're right. I think they did it after her show, which I love that show. I love right. the music. I love that there, she Reno? these guys in Reno, the guys, the few guys that are sitting close to them. You know, at the slots, uh-huh. she's like, "You don't give a shit." Like right. in, during the song, that is so. And then she's funny. You don't give a shit, and then she says, "Let's get the hell out of here." <laughs> we can rock this place. I love him. I love him. I love him. Oh, you forget the words. You're gonna go straight to hell. We could cut a demo. What else do you want to talk about before we wrap it up? Um, race. Yeah, let's. Yeah. So I realized, and I kind of always knew, but on this most recent rewatch, I really realized. Um, that race really plays no role in the movie. No yeah. stated um, role that, that another character has pointed to or the, anything. The only time race is ever brought up mm. is when, again, um, Whoopi is there with the lieutenant. She first gets to the church and uh, she says, "There's what is what am I, what am I going to do here? There's nothing here for me. It's a bunch of white women mm. walking around in penguin costumes. Right. That's the only reference to race. Yeah. So at all. I wonder if maybe there, there well of course there's always race operating in, in Oh yeah. the background, uh-huh. right? Uh-huh. It always there has to be um when you have one black character and the rest are white. Right. Um but it never is it's almost like she has command over them because she's black like she has them as an audience uh, all the time like like she as the um she's almost like the superhero or something because they all have never probably experienced somebody like her yeah some not just somebody who's black but somebody who's outspoken somebody who's oh definitely um yeah loud and boisterous but yeah you know that's funny they don't really view her as like oh a black woman no. wow uh-uh. no i think because and i had read fun fact about the street this really was it's interesting this film truly was shot in san francisco and reno which is right. very rare very to rare. actually shoot not only in the real locations that right. you're talking about but in two different locations which i was telling greg when we were watching this movie right. re-watching it the other night i actually looked it up because i honestly i i didn't even know reno is north of san francisco north east hmm. about three or four hours so you know that's kind of rare to bring everyone to these two real locations but the street where the the church really was they they dressed all that to look a little right. 
a little dumpier, a little, you know, rougher than it really was. Economically distressed. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so I thought when I was a kid, and I think Sister Act is one of those movies that definitely shaped my worldview. You know, I was like six or whatever and watched it a million times. Uh, I think one of the reasons why I had my views on race are the way they are is because of movies like Sister Act where, you know, especially growing up in the woods of Maine, Mm -hmm. you had, before we got satellite TV, you didn't see any black people anywhere Mm -hmm. outside, first of all, in the real world. The first black person that I saw in the real world, I was, it wasn't until I was about 13 years old. That late? Mm -hmm. Oh my God. You're like an Amish person. (laughs) Wow. I mean, growing up, in, I grew up in the Very different sticks. for me. Sticks. Yeah. You I were... grew up in the sticks. But all of, but, but up until I was probably 13 years old, all of my interactions or mm. all of my representations of was... race was in film and TV. Yeah. And especially Sister Act because I watched it so many times and you have a really powerful lead uh, black woman as, or yep. a black woman as the lead. Mm-hmm. Um, I just thought that that was the way the world was. Like oh. that, there that race w- wasn't a th- thing. Mm. That it wasn't like there was no construct. no need to really talk about it. Just yeah, no, but like, that that it wasn't even a concept. That there are just people in the world, and they're all different colors, mm. and it doesn't mean anything. Yeah, it's interesting. And, like I just wonder, would would it have been a better movie if there was a little bit more of a, a race discussion? No, or I, don't, I don't know. About, do you like that? I, I don't know about better or or, or, or anything or, like that. Yeah, I just or think different. At least I just think it's interesting that there'd be no way this movie would be made today. Oh, without without referencing it, it would almost be yeah. like a a not a what's the right word? Not a sin, but a a faux pas. Oh yeah, or, to not address or it, or just to really not cringy to be like, okay, are we not going to acknowledge that she's oh, the yeah. that she's the only black, only black person in the room, and what is that? What is? How does she probably? How does that probably make her feel? Yeah, like I just wonder, you know, since we were talking about there were different writers taking their turns on the script. This was originally meant for Bette Midler, who apparently was like sort of involved in the script, according to different sites. She recommended that the writer go to a real convent, you know, so she was kind of involved a little bit before saying no um, to the role. So it was meant for a white woman. It switches to a black woman. So I just wonder, well, what were the conversations like? Did Whoopi say like, yeah, we don't really need to talk about it. what's the big deal? Or was she, was did Disney say like, yeah, let's not, you know, like, I just wonder, right. did everyone truly not really kind of want to talk about right. race it's it's obvious you know um it's interesting to think yeah, about it's just it's just it is just interesting but i i was the same you know from my perspective as a child yeah because they didn't it wasn't mentioned it wasn't a thing that mm-hmm. was a, any part of the story or anything that yeah it just that totally shaped my uh, opinion like my worldview that like there was no <laughs> There was no racism. There was no difference. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so, uh-huh. you know. It's a little bit of a fantasy that way. I'd rather sing than do anything. <laughs> it's better than ice cream. It's better than springtime. It's better than sex. <laughs> no, I, I've heard. Thanks so much for watching. Next time, there's going to be a new movie that we'll talk about. So stay tuned. And please follow Release Date Rewind on Instagram for updates. Bye. Bye.